This picturesque lake in Cameroon has caused thousands of deaths. In 1986, the inhabitants of a small settlement near Lake Nyos heard a strange rumbling noise. Pillars of spray and foam rose above the body of water and the water in it turned red. Over the next 10 minutes, all living things within a radius of 25 kilometers died. 1,746 people were victims of the exploding lake. The explosion on Lake Nyos was not the first such disaster. Today, in Cameroon alone, there are around 43 potentially dangerous lakes. They explode every few years, and no one knows how to prevent this. So, could exploding lakes be the new apocalypse scenario? The Lake Nyos disaster was caused by a phenomenon that scientists call a limnic eruption. And it's not like an ordinary eruption or an underwater explosion. Such a catastrophe can happen at any volcanic lake, and the reason is carbon dioxide. CO2 is highly soluble in water and can accumulate there in great quantities. Since volcanic lakes are located in craters, large amounts of carbon dioxide enter them through small cracks in the bottom. For example, there's a magma reservoir under Lake Nyos in Cameroon at a depth of about 80 kilometers. It releases CO2 which seeps through the rock and oversaturates the water in the lower layers of the lake. The moment the water pressure on these layers becomes critical, or to the contrary, falls, the carbon dioxide gas bursts from beneath the lake and forms an invisible cloud. During the disaster in Cameroon, a cloud of carbon dioxide with a volume of over one cubic kilometer and a mass of almost 1.3 million tons rose from the bowels of Lake Nyos. At the same moment, a column of spray and foam about 100 meters high burst into the sky over the lake. The eruption also triggered a 25-meter wave that hit the coast and took down part of the forest near the lake. At the same time, the water in Nyos turned red. This happened because the deep layers of the lake are saturated with iron and appeared on the surface as a result of the explosion. There, under the influence of oxygen, the water oxidized and acquired a deep color of rust. But since carbon dioxide is heavier than air, a deadly cloud descended into the valley. Carbon dioxide poisoning occurs infrequently. Usually its concentration in the air doesn't exceed half of a percent. But if this number rises to 5%, a person will experience dizziness, nausea, drowsiness, and difficulty breathing. If the concentration of carbon dioxide rises to 10%, it can provoke convulsions, coma, and even death. And if you find yourself in a room where the air is 30% CO2, you'll instantly lose consciousness. There's no chance of surviving in such a situation. You see, carbon dioxide does more than just cause suffocation. It enters the bloodstream and replaces oxygen, which can cause complete cardiac arrest and damage internal organs, including the brain. The exact concentration of CO2 in the cloud that erupted from Lake Nyos is unknown, but it was definitely over 30% because the gas instantly killed 1,746 people and 3,500 head of livestock. Only those who were on high ground when the cloud descended into the valley were able to escape. In addition to signs of suffocation, blisters and red spots appeared on the victims' bodies, and the survivors were called sensing the smell of sulfur and rotten eggs. Most likely, other volcanic gases such as hydrogen sulfide escaped from the bowels of Lake Nyos along with the CO2. After a while, the clouds simply dissipated into the atmosphere. Among those who were within a radius of 25 kilometers from Lake Nyos, only 161 people survived. But the worst part is that this disaster is not the first in history, and certainly not the last. Two years before the limnic eruption at Lake Nyos, a hundred kilometers away, a similar disaster occurred. 
At night, residents of the area heard a strange explosion coming from Lake Manoon. At that moment, a truck carrying 12 people was passing through the valley near the lake. The car's engine immediately stopped working as carbon dioxide displaced oxygen and the combustion reaction could no longer take place. The people became trapped. The driver and nine passengers lost consciousness and died on the spot. But two people sitting on top of the truck survived. That's because, as I said before, carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen and nitrogen, which make up the air. So the colorless cloud that rose from the depths of Manoon was moving close to the ground. The victims had blisters on their skin, as if from burns, in strange discolored skin patches that doctors couldn't explain. The survivors reported smelling a bitter, acidic odor, which is uncharacteristic of CO2. The cloud probably consisted of a mixture of volcanic gases. In total, 37 local residents died that night. Researchers believe that such an eruption may happen again very soon. This time, it'll occur on Lake Kivu, which is situated on the border between the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda. In this catastrophe, which could happen at any moment, risks becoming the largest in history and taking the lives of millions of people. But what triggers these limnic eruptions? The reason may lie in the industrial production of gas from volcanic lakes. Lake Kivu isn't like Nios or Manoon. It's located not in a volcanic crater, but at a fracture point on the Earth's crust, which is called a rift. In addition, Kivu is many times larger. Its length is about 90 kilometers, its width is 50 kilometers, and its average depth is 220 meters. The the shores of the lake are densely populated, but its main difference from other limnic lakes is that the waters of Kivu are saturated not only with carbon dioxide, but also with flammable methane. That's because the lake is home to colonies of bacteria that absorb vast amounts of CO2 and produce methane instead. According to preliminary estimates, the lake's waters may contain 65 cubic kilometers of methane and 256 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide, and that's around 2% of all CO2 produced by humanity per year. If a limnic eruption occurs at Lake Kivu, the consequences will be dire. Methane will be the first to break loose. An enormous cloud will cover Lake Kivu Islands, killing every living thing in its path. The population of the largest island, Ijwe, which has around 250,000 inhabitants, will have no time to escape. At sufficiently high concentrations, a methane cloud can kill not only humans and animals, but even plants. Fortunately, methane is much lighter than air, and the cloud is likely to rise quickly and disappear in the atmosphere, but that won't save residents of Lake Kivu's coastal areas. In a few seconds, a giant cloud of CO2 will burst out of the lake. About 2 billion tons of gas will sink into the valley off the coast and cause the death of around 2 million people living in the area. In addition, a limnic eruption will result in a giant lake tsunami that will wash the coastal settlements off the face of Earth, leaving thousands of survivors homeless. But the most frightening thing is that Lake Kivu is unpredictable and unstable. Researchers don't know exactly when the disaster will strike, but they're sure that it could happen very soon. Since the lake is located in Rwandan and Congolese territory, the two governments should take all possible security measures to protect the population, but instead the countries decided to extract methane from Kivu for their power plants. In fact, gas has been extracted from the lake since the 1960s. A small station has been powering the brewery on the shore of Lake Kivu for 40 years, and in 2016, the government of Rwanda launched the first large-scale gas production project. Kivuwat, a barge with equipment, is located 13 kilometers from the coast above one of the deepest parts of Kivu. Four pipes descend to a depth of 350 meters and pump out gas-saturated water. As the water rises, dissolved methane and CO2 turn back into gas bubbles. At this stage, 80% of methane and 40% of carbon dioxide are pumped into a separate chamber, and the degassed water is drained to a depth of 200 
40 meters, the remaining mixture of gases is brought to a turret on the barge. Clean water taken from a depth of 40 meters is also pumped there. The pressure in the chamber increases, and most of the carbon dioxide dissolves again. CO2 saturated water is returned to the lake to a depth of 60 meters. The result of this process is a mixture of gases consisting of 85% methane. It's compressed and sent to a power station on the shore. This interference with Kivu's delicate balance looks frightening, but researchers claim that such gas production, on the contrary, can reduce the risk of limnic eruption at the lake. They say that to prevent a possible explosion, it's enough to prevent methane from accumulating in the water, and gas extraction is a great way to reduce gas concentration. The important thing is not to make it worse, because, as it turned out, the risks increase if the already degassed water is improperly pumped into the lake. In fact, the lower layers of Kivu consist of salty, gas-saturated water fed by volcanic springs, and the upper layers consist of fresh water without impurities of methane and carbon dioxide. Due to the fact that salty and freshwater layers aren't mixed, the pressure on the bottom of the lake keeps the gas in a liquid state. In 2009, the governments of Rwanda and the Congo adopted a document indicating that degassed salt water must be returned to a depth of at least 260 meters. Otherwise, salt water mixed with the freshwater upper layers can not only destroy fish and plants in the lake, but also trigger a limnic eruption. And Kivuat ignores these requirements, pumping water to a depth of 240 meters. But in fact, even if all the precautions are followed, the Lake Kivu disaster is inevitable. After all, there's evidence that volcanic lakes exploded long before gas production began. In January of 2017, a limnic eruption could have killed thousands of people in southern Italy. What happened is that in Lake Avernus, located in the crater of a volcano, all the fish suddenly died. The reason for this turned out to be that the lake overturned. During the winter months, the surface water temperature in Avernus drops to 4 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the lower layers saturated with carbon dioxide remain warm. At a certain point, cold water goes to the bottom, displacing the uninhabitable layers to the surface. All the fish in the lake die in an instant. Carbon dioxide is also released into the atmosphere. Fortunately, the amount in Avernus is insufficient to cause a limnic eruption. Research Researchers claim that such overturns of the lake have occurred every few years over the past two centuries. Since this process is cyclical, could limnic eruptions have happened in the distant past? Back in 1986, that was a question posed by Samuel Freeth, a researcher at Swansea University. He accompanied a scientific mission to Cameroon immediately after the Lake Nyos disaster, and Freeth noticed a strange detail. There were no dead fish in the lake after the explosion. But there's more than that. The local population said Nios never had any fish at all. This is strange because the rest of the volcanic lakes in the area are full of life. This led the explorer to believe that the eruption at Lake Nios was not the first. Most likely, a similar catastrophe had already happened at least once in the last 50 years. Moreover, the researcher believed it occurred at regular intervals for many hundreds of years. Indeed, references to it remained even in local myths and legends. For example, the legend of the exploding lake was preserved among the Combe people. In ancient times, the Bamesi chief invited the Combs to his settlement. But over time, he felt that his power might be shaken by the foreigners. Then, the Bamesi chief suggested to the Comb leader to gather the undesirable male members of both tribes in two houses and burn them. But when the chiefs lured the men into a trap and set fire to the houses, it turned out that the Bamesi chief left a door in his hut for his people to sneak out and escape from the fire. The comb leader couldn't endure such shame and decided to kill himself. He ordered his tribe not to carry out funeral rites, but to leave his body and just move out of Bamesi. But when the comb leader hung himself, the fluids from his body formed a lake, and the Bamesi decided to go fishing. But the moment their boats entered the water, there was a roar, and the lake exploded, drowning all the Bamesi. 
in northwestern Cameroon, where Lake Niles is located, there are over 250 different ethnic groups and nations, each with their own beliefs and folklore. But they all share myths about dangerous lakes. Some nations have tales of evil spirits rising out of the lake in fog and destroying all life, taking people's souls with them. Some legends mention lake explosions, and some people believe these bodies of water are inhabited by the souls of their ancestors who punish those who disrespect them. These stories suggest that Cameroon's limnic eruptions have been occurring for hundreds and thousands of years, terrorizing the indigenous people. So it's not gas production that triggers them, it's something else. Anthropologist Eugenia Shanklin, who collected and analyzed the myths of the people living near Lake Nyos, noticed a weird feature. Most of the lake-related catastrophes described in the legends occur at the beginning of the rainy season. And there's a scientific explanation for this. The reason is that a limnic eruption happens when methane and CO2 dissolved in the lower layers of water turn back into gas. For that to happen, it's enough to change the pressure on the lower layers of the lake and the water temperature were to shake the lake like a can of soda. This means that an earthquake, volcanic activity near the lake, landslides, cave-ins, and even ordinary rain or strong wind could trigger a limnic eruption. In other words, anything can become a trigger at any moment. And the only way to prevent a catastrophe is to extract gas from the lake's depths, which can also lead to a limnic eruption. It turns out there's no way to to prevent a disaster, but is there any chance to escape? In late August of 2022, inhabitants of settlements near Lake Kook began leaving their homes en masse. You see, the lake's water suddenly changed color, and the smell of sulfur began spreading through the valley. Lake Kook is located just 10 kilometers from Lake Nyos, and it also sits in a volcanic crater. If a limnic eruption occurs here, a deadly cloud could kill tens of thousands of people. But the scariest thing is that after the eruption at Lake Nyos, Lake Kook and other volcanic reservoirs in the region were tested for the presence of large amounts of CO2 in their waters, and Kook was declared safe. It appears that just in the past 36 years, it's accumulated enough gas to explode. To avert disaster, it's necessary to conduct annual monitoring of the gas content in the lower layers of all 43 potentially dangerous lakes. And that's just in Cameroon. Instead, the government has installed CO2 sensors off the coasts of only some of them. The sensors must loudly warn locals about a sudden increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the air. That way, people will have about an hour to evacuate to a safe place. And if you think exploding lakes are only a problem of Cameroon or the African continent, I have some bad news for you. The potentially dangerous bodies of water are lakes near Mammoth Mountain in the USA, Lake Mashu in Japan, Lac Pavin in France, reservoirs of the Eiffel Volcanic Region in Germany, and the entire Black Sea. The explosion of which could lead to disaster in six countries at once. So what should you do if you find yourself next to a potentially dangerous lake? The first rule is to be careful. Remember that any natural disaster could trigger a limnic eruption, from the weakest earthquake to long bouts of heavy rain. If the weather in your area suddenly changes, it's better to evacuate for a couple of days. The second rule is to trust your sense of smell. Very often, the cloud that comes out of the lake contains impurities of hydrogen sulfide and other volcanic gases. Thus, if you smell sulfur, rotten eggs, or soda in the air, move on to the next rule and climb to the nearest higher ground. Remember that life-threatening carbon dioxide is much heavier than air, so it'll travel along the ground. Therefore, the higher you are, the more chance you have to stay alive. 
The next rule is to hold your breath if you're in the cloud. The concentration of CO2 in the cloud exceeds 30%, so you risk passing out with your very first breath. So try not to breathe and get out of the danger zone as soon as possible. It's better to move on foot and at a quiet pace so you can hold your breath for a longer time. And don't even try to leave the danger zone by car because carbon dioxide won't let you start the engine and you'll just waste precious time. And the final rule is to be prepared. If you live near a dangerous lake, don't hesitate to buy a mask with an oxygen tank in case of a disaster. It'll save your life. A limnic eruption can only occur at a lake, the waters of which are oversaturated with carbon dioxide. But it's not necessarily about volcanic lakes. Theoretically, almost any water body can be saturated with dissolved gases, either from underground sources feeding it or intentionally for industrial purposes. Are you sure the lake in the central park of your city is 100% safe?